In this lesson, we explore voice communications, POTS or PSTN, and VoIP, attacks against them, and how to secure them. You can download the script for this video from above or at the end of the video. The script contains all graphics used. Voice communications carry highly sensitive and private information using one of two methods. POTS, also known as Public Switched Telephone Network, PSTN, and VoIP. Regardless of how voice communications are managed, organizations must always consider confidentiality when designing, maintaining, and using voice systems. A basic POTS configuration is shown here. This first example depicts single phones at home offices, or one or two person operations. Let's step through how this works. When the caller activates the handset, the receiver converts the analog voice signals into electrical signals. The electrical signals are transmitted to a terminal that connects the business or home office to the phone system. The terminal connects one or more voice customers via cable to a central office switching station. The switching station contains computerized switches that determine how to route the call. The call is routed through the appropriate switching stations until it reaches the station to which the called customer is most directly connected. The electrical signal is transmitted to the, transmitted to the relevant terminal and then to the target business internal phone system. The receiver of the call activates the handset, the handset converts the electrical signal into voice waves, and the call is established. Most organizations use a PBX for, uh, for POTS. A PBX, or Private Branch Exchange, manages phone access to and from the provider phone service network for a, net, for a business that has to manage more than just a couple of phones. POTS implementations with or without a PBX are vulnerable to call interception eavesdropping, tapping, and other easy-to-deploy attacks. None of the communications are encrypted within the organization or by the carrier. While no voice communication approach is completely secure, moving from POTS to VoIP can help strengthen voice security, in addition to reducing costs. Let's look at how VoIP works. VoIP, or Voice Over Internet Protocol, is an umbrella term for the standards that enable digital voice communication over the internet instead of over a traditional voice carrier. This eliminates long distance charges and, if properly configured, increases voice communication security. This graphic is not intended to show an enterprise VoIP implementation. It only provides a very high level showing how VoIP works. In our example, the organization uses IP phones at headquarters and at a satellite office. All internal company calls travel over internal network and internet connections. Calls to traditional landlines are transfer transferred by the VoIP provider to a POTS provider for completion. The portion of a call that goes to the POTS provider is outside VoIP security safeguards. However, there is no long-distance call associated with this connection since the long-haul portion of the call traveled over the Internet. VoIP security begins with managing risk during the design phase. During a risk assessment, there are six challenges that organizations should assess, including default security settings. This is no different from any other technology implementation. Default passwords and other security configurations must be addressed according to associated risk. Using VoIP over Wi-Fi. This is closely related to default security settings. Because VoIP devices often use wireless, it is important to ensure strong access controls to access encrypted Wi-Fi voice traffic. As I discuss in just a moment, organizations should avoid routing voice traffic over the same network segments as data. Next are malware infections and other network attacks. 
VoIP devices are connected to the network and the Internet. This makes them targets for malware and general exploit kits used to compromise network and endpoint devices that are installed directly or acting from another endpoint device. Eavesdropping Any traffic traveling over networks and the Internet can be susceptible to capture by threat actors. Vishing Vishing is the use of phones to speak with or leave voice messages for target employees within an organization. The threat actor represents herself as someone within the organization with authority, a vendor, financial partner, or other entity, with whom the target typically interacts. This malicious interaction can result in the target employee transferring funds or sensitive information to the threat actor. And finally, man in the middle. Man in the middle attacks against VoIP are possible when a threat actor spoofs call managers or endpoint transmissions. The steps organizations can take to protect VoIP systems are not too different from those we take to protect our data networks. First, we separate voice traffic from the data traffic. By segmenting voice onto its own set of network segments, it's reasonably safe from common attacks against data network devices. This also helps improve voice performance. In addition, control VoIP traffic and access to VoIP segments with VLAN access control lists. Encrypt Wi-Fi. This is a no-brainer. All business Wi-Fi should be encrypted. And like the hardwired phones, organizations should consider separating voice from data wireless networks. This is often done with secured VLANs. Use Network Address Translation, or NAT. NAT helps prevent external threat actors from seeing and mapping the internal network associated with VoIP services. Patch And disable international calling. Do not allow VoIP devices to make calls or connect to external resources located in high-risk geographic areas. This is easily done by blocking international calling. However, if international calling is required for business operation, security must regularly check for anomalous activity. And finally, educate users. Regardless of how well VoIP is protected, there is always residual risk. Users must use due care when using VoIP phones not specifically designated for classified communications. That's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.